Family feuds can be uh, triggered by the most insignificant momentary events, but their, their animosity can last for decades. Case in point. Years ago, I was out in LA on a Friday afternoon on business and getting ready for the return red-eye flight back to Harrisburg, and I get a call from the home office. They want me to be in Louisiana Monday morning early. I'm like, oh, God. So I don't really want to fly east and then turn around and fly south. So I called my friends, Ed and Lindsay Franco Ferreira, who lived just north of San Diego, and said, hey, can I hang with you guys for the weekend? They said, yeah, sure, come on down. So I get on and I start crawling my way down the I-5, and I finally get to Ed and Lindsay's house. And Ed and I begin our mission to drink and empty every bottle of vodka in his house that night. Lindsay shows up and says, boy, have I got news for you. Now, Lindsay was a Jeopardy aficionado. And at some time during the past month, they, they announced, the show announced that we're going to have auditions in San Diego. So Lindsay jumps on the phone and hits the redial button 3,000 times and finally gets one of the 50 slots for the audition for Jeopardy. She's really excited, so she has a drink and says, well, I'm going to go upstairs and study. And we, we, Ed and I laughed and said, you idiot, you know, what are you going to study for? It's Jeopardy. She says, oh, no. She says, I said, it, we said it's worthless. She said, the only thing worthless here are you two guys sitting at the table. <laughs> so she goes upstairs. So Ed and I proceed to drink all the vodka and wee hours of the morning, go to bed. Next thing I know, Saturday morning, Lindsay's shaking me to get me, get away, get away, you gotta get me up to take me to the audition. So, okay, I get up and I put on my, my, my traveling workout clothes, which consists of cut off blue jean shorts, a sleeveless t-shirt and flip flops. I go downstairs and Ed's at the kitchen table, looks about like I do and about as tastefully dressed too. So Lindsay comes down, and Lindsay is a tall, elegant, slim Brit expat, and she looks like Princess Diana. And she looks at us and just rolls her eyes. <laughs> so the three of us pile into Ed's truck, and we, we start heading off to the audition. We get there, and there's this big, ornate entrance room, and there's 50 people in that room, and they're all, the women are dressed like Lindsay, the men are dressed like Admiral Zumwalt, because they're dressed Navy whites, and apparently the Navy has a big uh, naval base there that have a lot of Jeopardy fans. <laughs> and so they start passing, so <clears throat> they get in there, and so suddenly all these people go into the room, and Ed and I are out in this entrance room with, uh, with, with nothing. And he says, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I th before I could even say I think I want a bloody, this guy comes out and says, hey, are you two guys here for the, uh, for the auditions? And we said, well, not exactly. And he said, well, we have two no-shows. You guys want to come in? <laughs> we said, well, shit fire, hell yes. <laughs> so, so we go into the room, and they, have the, and they sit us at the back table and the back row of tables. It's just like a classroom. And we're all by ourselves. And they have the Jeopardy show set up there, and they have a big screen. And they start passing out tests, like the SATs. And you know, they go, okay, here we go, pencil, go. And you open it up and there's, you know, the usual questions like, you know, who's buried in Grant's tomb and, you know, what's a Greek urn and all that kind of stuff. So after 20 minutes, pencil's down. And they go, well, we're going to, uh, we're going to take the collect, collect the test, we're going to go uh, score them. Guy comes out and we're watching the Jeopardy reruns. Guy comes out and he says, I'm going to announce 12 names alphabetically. If you hear your name, you leave. If you don't hear your name, you stay. Or hear your name, stay. Don't hear your name, leave. So he says, all right, here we go. Coleman, Elliker, Franco Ferreira, that would be Ed. And just then, Lindsay turns around and goes, Jesus Christ, you know, you bastards. <laughs> and we're like, well, so Lindsay leaves, and, you know, she, she walks out smoking mad. And so now the 12 of us, we get up there, we got to play the game. So I'm standing there doing the game thing, and I'm between Princess Diana and Admiral Zumwalt. And, uh, and they, they go, that, they, we do that, and then the caucus leaves, and they go out and score it again. And they come back and say, we're going to see six names. Say six names, and same thing. You hear it, stay. Well, they call my name, but they don't call Ed. 
So Ed's walking out, and he looks by. He looks at me walking by, and he says, you bastard. <laughs> so now we have to play the, we, they have the interview thing. They ask me, you know, how do you, you know, how come you're wearing what you're wearing? I said, well, you know, it's the best stuff I could do short notice. I have a better sleeveless T-shirt for the real show. <laughs> so, so in October, so that was in August. In October, they, I get a call, and they get me out to L.A. They said, come on out to L.A., my nickel. And uh, got, anyway, I got on the show, and it was about 1988. So fast forward this July. I call Ed and Lindsay and say, hey, I got a free weekend. I'm coming down to Knoxville to visit you guys. I drive down there. I pull up to their house. They open the door, and both of them say, you bastard. <laughs> 